I'll be using the Azure 2-in-1 Dip Powder Liquids in the shade Rhea from Revel Nail. So the first reason could be because you have too much product on your brush. So if I go right in on top of my nail with this much liquid and then dip into the powder, it causes the powder to ridge and ripple. The tall tale sign of this is that it's still wet looking. That means there's too much liquid for the powder to absorb into. So you can see that big ridge right here. So I'm going to dip back into the powder. So that's one thing I would probably do in this instance. However, why I stress about liquid control is because what's going to happen is if you're dipping into the powder, that bunching, the rippling, the liquid, all of that product is going to be pushed up onto your skin around your sidewall area and that's the last thing that we want. To prevent this, we need to remove the excess product on our brush. You don't need that much on there. So be sure to wipe off your brush inside the bottle and then do a thin, even layer across the nail. Then when you dip into the powder, you're going to notice you don't have any lumps or bumps anymore. If for some reason you do still have some ridging going on, then I would suggest when you go in for your layers to instead of dipping into the powder, pour the powder over top. This is going to help reduce some of that bunching and rippling that happens when you dip into the jar. The last reason could be because the powder itself is very dense. So darker, more pigmented powders can be more dense and cause the rippling. So I would suggest using a toothpick to stir it up to make sure everything is nice and fluffy and consistent. And then again, I still suggest pouring the powder over top. Not only is that going to reduce it rippling, but it's also going to help reduce any staining that could be under the nail or on your skin. After we apply our base liquid, it's important that we dip right into the powder. Don't wait, don't go on to more nails. If you sit and wait, it could be that the liquid is drying too fast. It can also be because you have a fan blowing nearby or the AC vent is up above you and that's causing the liquid to dry in certain spots. So then when you dip in, you notice it's not all covered on the nail. There are also different liquid dry times. Some are slow, some are fast. So if you have a faster drying liquid, let me show you a trick you can do. So you're going to take your base liquid and do a layer of this on top of the nail and let it dry. What that's going to do is slow down the dry time on your next layer. It's also going to give it sort of like a glue layer that's going to give it an even surface to adhere to and a better even coverage when you dip in. So once that base liquid is fully dry, I'm going to go in for my next layer of my base liquid and then dip into the powder. You're going to notice now it's fully covered on the nail and it's an even beautiful surface. The next reason it could be patchy is because the nail itself is too smooth. So it's important that we do remove the shine from the natural nail as one of the prep methods so that the base liquid has something to adhere to. It can also be as simple as maybe you just don't have enough base liquid on the nail when you're dipping in. So give some of these methods a try and if you really want to explore other things, you could try finding a slower dry time liquid. This one here is the Odorless from Color My World Dips is super slow drying. And then the Azure 2 in 1 is my go to, and it's a medium dry time. First thing we gotta do if we have any cracking or chipping is figure out if it's the top coat or if it's actually the dip powder. To do this, we're going to buff off the top coat or at least that first layer of shine. You can also use like a 180 grit nail file as well. And then if you see that crack goes all the way through to the dip powder, then you know you have a dip powder issue. But if it stops at the top coat, then you know it's your top coat. To prevent the dip powder from cracking, I suggest building up an apex so that you have the proper strength for your nail shape length and lifestyle. This is going to vary for everyone. To do this, I like to slowly build up strength in the center and then work my way towards those sidewalls, really focusing around that free edge. So notice we're having more layers down here at our free edge where we need the strength. A lot of times it has to do with our shape as well. So if you have shapes like square or coffin with those corners. So notice again, I'm going to work my way back with my layers. That way I don't get too bulky up here at my cuticle area, but I still have a lot of layers and strength here at my free edge. I'm going to go ahead and do one more full layer of color across the entire nail. So that's only two layers up here at my cuticle area so far, but a lot more layers at my free edge. 
Now that would be it. Personally, I like to go in for one more layer of clear, so that's gonna protect it when I file shape and buff, but this step is optional depending on what you need for your lifestyle and how bad the cracking is. The next way we can prevent cracking and chipping is by applying enough activator. So we did a lot of layers. So what I like to do is apply a full generous layer of activator to the entire nail. And then once I finish all of them, I go back in for a second layer. This just double, triple checks that we have enough activator on the nail to properly harden it and let it adhere to our nail. After two minutes have passed, we can do a quick buff and a file, and then it's time for our second layer of activator. Think of the activator and the top coat again as a team. So when we apply this layer of activator, it's to help the top coat properly harden. After we apply this layer of activator, we wait two minutes again. Then after two minutes, we're gonna use a dry lint-free wipe. You can also use a dry napkin or a paper towel and not just swipe the nail, but really rub it across the nail. This is going to ensure that you get that super high shine with your top coat. I want you to think of your dip powder top coat like nail polish. Nail polish doesn't like to be over manipulated. It likes to be floated on and to not be messed with. It needs to dry. It's the same concept. So we're gonna remove the excess product from our brush and we're only gonna do three quick strokes for our first layer. So one, two, this is in real time, and three. That is it. You're going to let that be your first layer of top coat. Then be sure to wipe your brush off on a napkin, paper towel, lint-free wipe before returning it to the bottle. Notice here I have a really even, smooth, shiny finish. You know when it's dry when it starts to ridge and wrinkle. Look at the difference right here. It looks very ridged and wrinkly. Now I know layer number one is dry and I can go in for layer number two. Layer number two is going to be more precise, slow, detailed, get all the way to those sidewalls and really focus on your free edge. The reason I'm leaving this section in for cracking and chipping is because if you are having an issue with top coat, this is my tried and true technique that I use every single time and we need to cap that free edge. This is also going to help seal in that dip powder and to help give you the strength where you need it. Don't forget to wipe your brush off, return it to the bottle and that's it y'all. Remember all that hard work we just did? Well, this is still wet, so I am going to purposely smudge it. Now, let's say, for example, you didn't smudge it, but it looks cloudy. Well, something definitely happened during that process, so let me show you how we fix it. Now, it's important that it is fully dry before we move on to the next step. We're gonna grab a buffing block, you can also grab a nail file, and we're going to remove that top coat. So just buff off the top coat, whatever it is that went wrong, whether it be cloudy or smudged. Once you're done with that, we're going to dust it off and apply a layer of activator, and then wait two minutes. These steps probably look awfully familiar, right? So we're going to grab our lint-free wipe. You can also use a dry napkin or a paper towel and rub it across the entire top surface. Then go in for three strokes with your top coat. That's it. Remember, that's all we need and let it dry. Make sure you start to see the ridging and the wrinkling going on. Then we can go in for layer number two, which is more precise, detailed, get all the way over to those sidewall areas. And this is how we can fix if for whatever reason our top coat goes wrong at the end. If you've ever had your bottle get sealed shut or maybe the liquids are just super thick and goopy, let me show you how we can prevent this. Every single time the base coat or the top coat touches your nail, it needs to be wiped off before being returned to the bottle. So pretend this is a naked natural nail and we're applying it, then wipe it off. You could have some oils left on your nail and that can contaminate your base liquid. So next you dip into the powder, everything's going great, it's dried, so we go to dust it off. Now when we dust it off, it looks like everything is removed, all of that excess powder. But when we go in for layer number two, it's always possible that some of that excess powder is still on the nail. And then if we were to not wipe our brush off, then we could be possibly putting that excess powder on our brush bristles back into the bottle. Notice here, it looks like my brush looks fine. However, once I go to wipe it off on the napkin, you're going to see there actually was some pink pigment left. The next culprit for contaminated liquids can be the activator. So this step is important, but it can cause the liquids to harden. So after we do our quick file shape and buff, we go in for our second layer of activator. And this time we really need to wait two minutes. It's so important. Set a timer, look at a clock, do something to make sure it's been at least two minutes. 
then we're going to use a dry lint-free wipe to rub off any leftover activator residue so we don't get this in our top coat. After we do our three quick strokes of top coat for our first layer, wipe the brush off front and back before returning it to the bottle. This is how we're going to prevent getting anything back into our bottle after it's touched the nail. Then we can go in for layer number two. And again, after layer number two, we really need to wipe our brush off front and back before going back to the bottle. To prevent the liquids from getting sealed shut, it's important that when you're done with your manicure for both the base coat and the top coat, remove that excess product and then grab a clean napkin, paper towel, lint-free wipe to remove the excess up there on the neck and the rim. So I'm just going to remove all of that. You'll see here it looks very dry and clean now so I can seal it up. Be sure to really close it. I know that sounds silly, but there's many times where I leave just a tiny hairline gap and that can also cause the liquids to be contaminated. So once they're sealed shut, don't leave them on their sides, store them upright and away from the sun. I wanna give an honorable mention to Revel's gel thinner. So you use this gel thinner for their dip powder base coat and their dip powder top coat. So basically before or after a manicure, you can add a few drops of this to the bottle and it can help add to the longevity of your liquids and thin them out. And last, if you find yourself in a bind where you already have a contaminated base coat or a contaminated top coat, believe it or not, you can interchange these liquids. So if you need to use top coat in place of base coat, you can, it's the same steps and same with the top coat. So if your top coat goes bad you can actually use your base coat instead of that all right y'all that's it for today i hope your liquids stay thin your manicures stay beautiful and i'll see y'all next week